Welcome to Two Hypnotherapists Talking with me, Denise Billen Mejia in Delaware, USA. And me, Martin Ferber in Preston, UK. This weekly podcast is for anyone and everyone who would like to know more about the fascinating subject of hypnosis and the benefits it offers. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and psychotherapist. I'm a retired medical doctor turned consulting hypnotist. We are two hypnotherapists talking. So let's get on with the episode. So we're back again, Denise, just you and I. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and so little time has passed since the last time we saw each other. <laughs> I know. We do have some interesting people lined up, though, for later on, but we're not going to try and figure out who's going to record and what order no, but, anymore. <laughs> we have actually got some fantastic guests lined up, though. Yeah. Um, but like you say, no, no... Um, no false starts on dates and things. We'll leave it at that. So what are we going to talk about today? I think we should talk about the basis, the basics of okay. we we were trained differently. Not yeah. huge differences. Definitely a lot easier for us to work together than for some of the other people I've come across who do very valid work also. Mm. It's just it's an easier fit. Why don't you talk a little bit about I can't remember what the words stand for now. What what's the SF? Solution focused training. Academy. That's it. Yes. <laughs> solution focused. Yeah. Solution well, focused hypnotherapy. Well, I suppose in in one sentence, it does what it says on the tin. Um, we focus on the solutions. Um, but it, it's a whole. What's the word you use? Um, it's a whole discipline <laughs> in its own right. Um, it, it follows a structure um each session follows a structure um but it's not impersonal it is a personalized service yeah quick quick question for you though because you talk about solution focused mm. so you're you're obviously that's where that that's what the person comes to you for they want to yeah. want to fix whatever's wrong how much time do you have to spend with them talking about what it is that they don't like about whatever the issue is Okay, well, the, the initial consultation that I give can last anything up to about 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and they are free to talk about whatever they want in that initial consultation. And yeah, we can sort of explore when these things started and what effect they have um, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. <clears throat> I, th I think it is important to get that message across that I don't just dismiss the, the negative mm -hmm. things or dismiss what the issue is. It's just that moving forward as you know, the client gets better and the client gets to where they want to be. We don't focus on the causes of the presenting issue. Right. Uh, Actually, but, that, does, that is one big, a pretty big difference because most mm. people do 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes mm. talking to the person. For specific, they decide, yes, we're going to try this and I'll meet you on X day at this time mm. and usually online, but sometimes in person. Um, what would be something that would, tend to make you feel that you weren't the right person or it was um, the wrong modality for somebody. Right. Okay. Well, it, I think if as the conversation went along, somebody started to express a lot of doubts about hypnotherapy, for example, mm -hmm. then they would be talking themselves into thinking it wouldn't work for them, in which case it won't work for them. Mm -hmm. if, but you do now you do a, a mini hypnosis with them in the room don't you on the first meeting I, I may or may not depending on the person do um you know a, relaxation yeah you know yeah. I, may, I may do something um sort of like a, a little test a sort of thing you know like talk about lemons and that kind of thing um but I, I will also do a relaxation yeah because mm -hmm. generally when they've had that initial consultation anyway, and they have been talking about things which have upset them in the past and one thing or another, I don't want them to leave there with that spinning around in the mind. I want right. them to leave there feeling good. Um, so yeah. I will do a mini relaxation at the end of the session as well. So they can experience for themselves, um, you know, what it feels like to be completely relaxed and focused. Mm -hmm. And have you ever had somebody not be able to go through that process? Um, strangely enough, the one person who said to me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to paraphrase now, um, but mm -hmm. words to the effect of I'm always that wound up. I can't see how you could possibly make me relax. relax. Mm -hmm. They were one of the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ones that fight the hardest fall the best. Yeah. 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 I, I had actually, if you remember the gentleman I was seeing for a while back, 
um, the first time I just did a do over because he could not relax the first mm. meeting that and that was the first paid session we'd had the conversation he really wanted it to work but he was so invested in it working he could not just relax. Mm. But the second time, it was fine. He just needed to get over this. I'm not going to do anything really strange. So, yeah. No, no, as I say, <laughs> that, that, that always sticks in my mind, the one person who was convinced that they wouldn't even be able to relax or stay quiet mm. long enough to listen to me. They were a really, really good subject. Um, <clears throat> and absolutely. But do you happen to know whether this person found you by themselves or were, they, were you referred, were they referred to you? They were referred to me okay. by one of the clinics. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but th typically this particular person and many of my clients as well have come to hypnotherapy as a sort of last resort. Yeah. Do, do you find that with a lot of your clients? Yeah, it does They've tend to be everything else thing. first, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, partly because we're not as well publicized as some of the other mm. things. Um, but it is one of the ways I work is to, to talk to when somebody comes to see me, I, I need to talk to their doctor. And once I've talked to their doctor, mm. they say, and it'll work for these other people too. And it'll work. And so I have beginning to get people referred from physicians already. Not very many yet, but I, 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 I never just... dies. <laughs> Yeah, well, absolutely. But I, I just wonder when hypnotherapy, hypnosis um, will be just generally accepted as one of the modalities. Because I'm, I'm thinking, <clears throat> excuse me, okay, we were talking off air before about CBT. Mm -hmm. And that's been around since about the 1950s, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah but that therapy mm. has been thought of, I think, for a while. Probably mm. actually not much before the 30s, as Freud was like, late 20s and 30s. yeah yeah but I, i'm just thinking about when you know modalities or, or let's take emdr there's another one okay mm -hmm. um that's been around what 30 years something like that yeah about the eight, early 80s yeah i'm, I'm just wondering how <clears throat> how many hurdles emdr practitioners had to jump through before that general level of acceptance um by Do those know, who would think, refer to it i think that tends to be an arm of practice mm. So they, they're offering other things. I, I was offered it once and I'd seen, mm. been seeing the therapist for several years when she said, oh, we could try this. And, oh, you did that. I didn't know you did that. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think there's a tendency for just try this and then we'll go try this and we'll try mm. this and, and never giving it a chance to really settle. Mm. You know, it's like people. I want. I want to come to you tomorrow and get hypnotized again. No, no. Let it. Let it do its work before we go. <laughs> do something else on top. I. Yeah. I don't only see see my clients usually two weeks apart. You. You are about a, a week. Right? Yeah, usually a week. Usually a week. Yeah. Um. Although over recent months, more and more of them have switched to fortnightly. Yes. Um. And it, I think for those think people, it seems to be working better. Yeah, I think closer than a week, it's you're just not getting full value. You you want to really take that, have that episode work as well as it can, and then you you use something else to bring it along a little bit. Yeah. One of the things that people think is that they come in with a laundry list and give you the laundry list and, and walk out the door half an hour later and they're fine. And, and it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, I in part because their mind says, no, too much change. Yeah, I, I, I call it a shopping list over here. Yeah. And it's um it, it's quite funny though, because part of the structure of the sessions I do is to ask people what's been good over the last week mm -hmm. to get them into that all important left prefrontal cortex when they're talking to me. So they're just looking back and thinking of good things that have happened. Um, and I, I do have one or two that come in with a big full shopping list of it because they're taking the therapy really seriously. They're giving it their best. They want to get better and they want mm. to, you know, play their part in it. Because I always say with therapy that, you know, the clients have got to play the game if they don't, yeah. but, you know, they're they, not they getting the work. best out of it, yeah. are they? Right. Um, we're certainly doing our part, but they have to yeah. be able to do it. I, I do have one or two that come in with what I call shopping lists of what's been good. You know, the, they've been noting every little thing down as they've gone along. Right. But the other thing is with this is you make one change mm. and lots of other little things or the smaller issues just fall into place as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. You start seeing hope at the end I, of the journey. Well, that, that's the important thing. That's the word, isn't it? That's hope. 
Um, mm. I, I think with any therapy, if you've got hope, um, then you're already facing forwards and you're already going to start to engage with it. Um, it it's that hope for recovery, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And I, I always say to people, recovery isn't just possible, it's likely. Yes, yes, that's the, that's the difference. Mm. I always, the, the thing that trips me up is you don't want to suggest ever that something isn't going to work. No. Or even has a possibility of not working. No. But at the same time, I come from a medical background. You never tell them anything <laughs> is an absolute. It's got to be, most people find this is great relief. <laughs> Mm. So I, I tend to walk on both sides of the. Well, yeah, I mean th- th- that's actually quite interesting because with your medical background and how you've been taught in hypnotherapy, hypnosis, mm-hmm. um, there are obviously going to be some conflicts in the way you deliver it in, and the statements right. you give to people in managing expectations, for example. Yeah. Because you know yes. when you if if. As a medical doctor, if you gave somebody a prescription and they say to me, will this work? Even then you won't say, I Works for most it. people. Yeah, works for most <laughs> people. <laughs> well, I, it's strange, actually, because I, I do say to people, you know, most people, this works straight away. For some people, it takes a little longer. Yes, yes. And and that is, of course, true, because it's the way that they learn. Mm. Or they, It's very different. Some people immediately see a change. Yeah. And other people can take almost a week before they notice it. Yeah. I'm of course, pers- a lot of time you don't actually notice it. When you go back in and have them tell the story of what's been going on in the last week, they you can bring their attention to the fact that this is different than what you were saying last week. Mm. This is different from what you were saying last week. Enough for them to be able to be cheered by the fact that they've made a change but without making them feel like an idiot because they didn't realize they changed mm, that yeah that's always a fine line as well because let's face it yeah. we, we we don't want our clients to ever have a, a a thing where they think oh i've been silly you know we, we, yeah. we, we never want them to feel like that do you use scaling with people in your not pre-talk as much, not as much as you do i do mm. with some things but but it's very much a part of the of the way uh, people change your way think of uh, well yeah but that, that could be quite interesting that's that's the thing mm-hmm. because you can have somebody but you do that at the end of every session or just I every so it, often no I, I do it every session and it's before we do what we call the miracle question and um, okay. we, we ask people where they are on the happiness scale out of 10 where mm-hmm. one is you don't even want to get out of bed and come and see me and 10 yeah. is the best you could possibly feel mm-hmm. and I can get somebody who has told me that they're having a tough time, the life's pretty miserable, X, Y, Z is wrong. Um, mm-hmm. And then when I get to the scaling question, you know, on a scale of zero to 10, as I've just said, they'll say, oh, I'm eight out of 10. It's like, well, but that's, what that's you've what told you... me doesn't correspond. <laughs> right, but just the fact that they can offload it to you mm. in itself can be... Can make them feel and, better. And that you've accepted it can make them feel better. Exactly. Mm. And this, this is really where, where I get very very mixed feelings okay about this kind of thing because one if our clients are just focusing on the negative and everything that's wrong then they're going to amplify it but Mm -hmm. on the other hand if they do offload they feel better for it and it's like well where do we strike that balance yeah i do think it's it's we're going to talk about that's why the first session is always so long Mm. (laughs) you you want to get as much as possible about what the negative is out of the way. Yeah. So they can start to apply positive things. But, you know, it's like, let's talk about weight because that's such an obvious mm. thing that we both see quite a few people for. There is nothing that you can do other than surgery. And even that doesn't, it's not immediate. No. You, you can't hypnotize somebody to be thin. You can no. hypnotize somebody to have better eating patterns so they will get where they want to go. Mm. but there is no snap your fingers and it's done. If somebody came to me because they wanted to lose two pounds, I would suggest a better use of their money. I mean, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's silly. Most of these people are coming, they've got 50 to 200 pounds to lose, a mm. lot of weight. Mm. And <laughs> did, did, in terms of weight loss, do you ever do aversion therapy? You know, if somebody says to you, can you hypnotize me not to want to eat chocolate, for example? Mm, no. I do, I'm not a big fan of aversion. No. Because it backfires. 
you know, your mum's made you a beautiful cake and you've had a really good aversion therapy. You don't want to walk in the room, see the beautiful cake and vomit. That is not what you want to do. You, 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 want, you want to have, a, oh, that's interesting. I can take just a little piece of this because somebody mm. made this for me. And that little piece is enough. Mm. It satisfies you. Mm. And that's the difference. It, it's, it's the, they made me a cake, I'm going to throw the whole thing in my face. Which mm. Some people's dietary habits are are such that they cannot control no. what they're doing. But you, I don't, I don't think um, aversion is really the way. And, mm. Unless no, it I just wonder because li life threatening, I, maybe. Mm. But I think it's it backfires. Yeah, no, I just wondered if you did aversion therapy because, as as we were discussing before we came on air, our therapies have a lot of similarities, but there are differences mm -hmm. as well in the way we practice things. I don't do aversion therapy. No, I think it's fallen away from, I don't think a lot of people do it anymore. Mm. Or certainly it's not the first thing they turn to. Mm. You really um, I mean, I, 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 I would do distraction therapy as I, I, I mm -hmm. that's the name I've given to it, a distraction Fair technique. Enough. So describe that technique to us, please. Okay. <laughs> so for example, okay, if somebody weight management let's go on to weight management again somebody wants help with their eating habits and they eat three great meals a day no problem there but then they binge eat in the evening after the evening meal they carry on eating and uh, maybe they'll have some toast maybe they'll have potato chips maybe they'll eat sweets even though they've had their evening meal and should be sufficed okay mm -hmm. and i will talk to them about what is that feeling that you get just before you eat those things okay and I will try and get them to change or I will help them to change what they regard that feeling as. Is, do you, is there a one th feeling that tends to be more prevalent? Yeah, it's usually that, that feeling that they are still hungry and they need to eat something. Oh, okay. okay. It's not, it's not, they're not looking for love or some, you know. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just okay. talking about people who just eat okay. because they don't have that full thing. They're not getting that signal, that satiety. Um, mm. So I will I was change. thinking, like, you know, when I, when I was a kid, we always got two biscuits mm. and a glass of milk. Mm. And then bedtime is about a half hour later. Yeah. And I, it's it's not a habit that you really need as a child because dinner wasn't that long ago. And mm. in, in British terms, back in the 50s and 60s, it was tea time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that, that was just something I always did. It, it took a long time for that to go away. It was just, it was part of the ritual. It was, I don't think it was particularly bad for my weight. I'm certainly, I'm heavier than most of my sisters, but, um, you know, you'd eat a normal dinner and you'd go off and do something or occasionally watch TV or whatever. And then it was a signal to your brain that you were going to be going to sleep. Now, a signal to your, to your brain that you're going to sleep could be washing your face and getting changed. Yeah, cleaning you your teeth. You don't need food. Cleaning your teeth, exactly. Yeah. Now, it's strange, you know, we were talking again before we went on air how we can hear music and uh, from a certain time it'll take us back. But mm -hmm. you've just mentioned something and you just took me right back. Um, <laughs> when we were little... Um, Again, same thing, we would have our evening meal. But then at bedtime, about 9 o'clock, it was biscuits. But yes. you, could, you could have three plain ones or two cream ones. <laughs> oh, so we like, didn't get choices. We got whatever we had. In the no, 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 we had a choice. <laughs> you could have three plain ones or two cream ones. But now this is the thing, okay, with a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Mil milky coffee? Was that yeah, it was milky, co yeah. Milky, milky coffee, two sugars, you know, the kind that you usually give children. Not okay. Ovaltine? No, no, no. I didn't like Alex. it. No, no, I was I was offered Ovaltine, didn't like it. Didn't like cocoa, drinking chocolate. Um, I didn't like any of the bedtime drinks, but I had a very milky coffee. <laughs> but isn't it interesting how you, you hear something and it takes you right back? Yeah, and that's instantly. really the way both of us work. That you yeah. find those things for the clients that you can just have Take them back to happier response. times or just reconnect them with things. Mm -hmm. it, it's sort of like reconnecting those neural pathways, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To where we, and this is why I talk about a default position, where we will instantly connect with good things, positive things, let's say mm -hmm. positive things rather than good things. Um, and, and yeah, that is a lot of what we do. And this is when, again, using weight or trying to avoid something, 
when we're in that negative frame of mind, we're, we're just connecting with a load of jumble there and we're scratching mm-hmm. around for things. When we can make these direct connections to happier memories, and this is what I do when people come in and I ask them what's been good at the beginning of the session. I'm trying to get them to reconnect immediately with what's been good in the last seven days. Get them into that positive frame of mind. The, and, audio, the audio you send your clients, mm. do you, obviously you have to prepare it after you've spoken with them. Do you use something that's directly related to the previous se- session or is it a, more of a relaxation thing? No, it's just, a, it's just a relaxation thing. Yeah. The sessions, the, the live sessions are tailored. Um, mm-hmm. the, the bedtime recording is just a very um, general relaxation Okay. Um, because it, it's purely there to get them to relax and, and go to sleep or to help them get better quality sleep. Um, mine, mine is more likely to be on the issue, but I wait mm. a couple of days and I touch base with them, see what's changed. Mm. If, if nothing's happened by third day, they might need a little help getting some change there. Mm. But um, there are occasions when the difference is so rapid that you don't want to go like a dead horse you know you want yeah. to change. what else would you like to change yeah, <laughs> yeah t- talking to shame we, again we were talking off there weren't we about shopping lists yes. when clients come with shopping lists or as you call them a laundry list yeah um of things um that they want to change or improve on and I, I think we're both on the same thing with this one isn't it well which would you like to change yes. first let's do which one is the item thing at a time make- the thing that would make the biggest difference let's mm. work on this now if somebody comes and says they want to be able to drive further away than two blocks and they want to lose 300 pounds if the 300 pounds is probably really important but that's going to take physically a lot of time mm. never mind how good you are as a hypnotist there there's actual real life in in place but the driving issue it mm. can be something where you can get effect very quickly yeah, and if always, you, depending on the way they learn, it mm, can be quite quick. Yeah, but also then, once you had gone through successfully with the driving issue, then your client would know for a fact that exactly. hypnosis works for them, and they would know that whatever techniques you then use right. for the weight will work for them. Yeah, exactly. And it's really a question of holding their hand as long as they need your help getting there because after with me it's usually around the eight eight nine weeks and they say you know i don't think i need you anymore i think i can just do it myself Mm. okay you know where i live (laughs) (laughs) you know how to get hold of me anyway (laughs) (laughs) all right well i've I've explained what my sessions are about denise let's let's hear about yours on the next episode shall we yeah okay okay Uh, hopefully hopefully one of our guests will be able to record for us before the next session yeah okay if not we'll we'll talk my thing again (laughs) yeah well you can talk me through one of your sessions so i'll catch you on the next one okay okay (laughs) thanks Bye. bye bye we hope you've enjoyed listening Please remember, this podcast is designed to give you an insight into therapeutic hypnosis and is for educational purposes only. So remember, consult with your own healthcare professional if you think something you've heard may apply to you or a loved one. If you found this episode useful, you can apply for free continuing professional development or CME credit using the link provided in the show notes. Feel free to contact either of us through the links in the show notes. Join us again next week.